Seattle, Washington, the birthplace of grunge, soaring salmon, a progressive art-centric city surrounded by lush evergreens, sparkling sounds, and even better food. We're here at the infamous Pike Place Market where we're gonna start with a Seattle staple, Eleanor's Greek Yogurt. We're here with Micah, the manager at Elenos here at the Pike Place location. And today we're going to talk about what they do here with their unique flavors of Greek yogurt and the story behind Elenos. So thanks so much for having us. Why Greek yogurt? Because I feel like when people think of Greek yogurt, they usually think that it's like tangy and not sweet and more of like a breakfast food. It's just such a versatile product. So we do have the tangy kind of version. Mm -hmm. It's our natural, completely unsweetened, and it's great for recipes and everything. Yeah. But, you know, we did throw honey in it make it a delightful treat for summertime guests and it's it's kind of uh, riding that middle ground between a really sweet delectable ice cream like treat that mm -hmm. leaves you feeling a little bit better about your health than eating ice cream. Right yeah that's what I loved about so. this when I first stumbled across you guys was that your case almost looks like a loaded gelato case. Yeah and yeah. we actually get that confusion all the time. Yeah. So Pike Place you know is such a Seattle staple of touristy spots. You guys must just yeah. be like slammed all day long especially during summer seasons like right now. Very definitely. So how much Greek yogurt do you guys go through in an average summer day? Anywhere from like 35 to 60 trays in an average wow. weekend. Wow, and you can take some home too, right? I see your different yeah, sizes because I course. would hope that most people wouldn't be able to eat a quart of Greek yogurt in a sit-in. Well, I've done but it one time, oh. but I would it was a long time ago. I actually kind of want to see that. <laughs> so you can come up and take as many samples as you want. Exactly. Really? Yeah. Do you want to try? Can I? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, wait. I'm gonna. I want to make it as authentic as possible. So sure, I'm gonna. Sure. I'm gonna be a customer. Yeah. I'll get in line. I'll be formal. Oh, hello. Hi. Is this Elenos? It is. Oh, great. Can I try some stuff? You can try everything. Can I try everything? Because I'm everything. disgusting and have no self-control. But this is that lemon meringue flavor you like that tastes just and like a meringue. And it's got like the texture on top. Then yeah, and that texture is our handcrafted shortbread oatmeal cookie mm. crumble that we also make ourselves. I think that's my favorite. I love anything with texture in it. We do have yet to try the Marionberry pie. That's true. Shall we dabble? We shall. Okay, I'm coming back in. Of course. <laughs> So now we're gonna make your Marionberry, right? Marionberry pie. Marionberry pie. Okay, yes. right, because it's got the, the shortbread cookie crumble. Exactly. Cool. I'm Perfect. ready to work here. Perfect. <laughs> so tell me what you're doing here. We do a quick rotation for consistency of yogurt, you know, so make sure that any of the juices that might be hanging out in the corners get pushed back Natural into the yogurt. Natural separation. Exactly. Yeah. So we take it from these bags, squeeze this thick delectableness into the tray. And then we add a little drizzle of marionberry puree in here. Beautiful. Look at that color contrast. Right? It's all sorts of very pretty, right? Yeah, gorgeous. I and love I the just, swirl. I'm not sure what to do with the leftover on the spoon. I mean, I think I can help you out there. <laughs> and then we spread a layer of oatmeal cookie crumble. That looks so good. Everyone's like, oh, Greek yogurt is so healthy, but I think this is, this is a way to get people kind of, I guess, to transition into the Greek yogurt. Yeah, <laughs> and, but uh, yeah, it does ruin you for grocery store yogurt. Oh, that's true. And then we top it off here with a little bit of a nice little pattern to kind of emulate the look of a pie. Gorgeous. Slap a spoon in the bad boy and it's ready to go. And now we have our full case. Gorgeous. So, I don't know if you know this, but um, Elenos has a serious cult following here. Oh, yeah? Serious. It's so funny because I feel like everyone feels like it's their own little secret. Uh huh. And then when you, like, I love saying I work for Elenos because people just lose it. Light up. <laughs> Light up. And it's, it's really cool because everyone does think it's their own little secret, but it's like a secret club that a million everyone. people or everyone is in. That's a secret, but it still yeah, got that secret It's really feeling. cool. It's really cool. <laughs> I know, actually, um, when I first found you guys a while back, I was waiting outside in the line and I heard somebody walk by with her friends and she was like, she's like, oh, this is Elenos. It's like, 
a must do when you're here. Everybody knows about it. <laughs> it's, it's so true. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm in the right line then. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's really cool because of where we're placed. We're in like one of the number one tourist spots. Right. So we get emails every day from France, Arizona, South Carolina. When are you guys coming here? We're like, we're trying. <laughs> it's so awesome because we just get such amazing exposure and we have just fans just everywhere. That's really, really cool. cool. I mean, your stuff is absolutely delicious. So I think I might be part of the cult now. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, the owner of Bluebird Ice Cream on Fremont Street. Thank you so much for having us. Your yes. store is absolutely adorable. Thank you, thanks for being here. Yeah, so tell us about how you guys started and what yeah. everything about Bluebird is. Sure, so Bluebird started, this is our 10th summer, which is crazy, wow. it's nuts to me. Um, and we started in 2009, we opened the doors to our, uh, our, our first day of business. And my concept was very simple. I just wanted to open a uh, sort of a mom and pop ice cream shop. And being here in Seattle, we have so much opportunity for sourcing both locally grown, of course, but also collaborating with makers in town. I mean, we're, we're here in the Fremont neighborhood now. If you walk outside a couple times a day, you'll smell the chocolate from the chocolate factory two oh, blocks yeah. away in the air. And, yeah. uh, as far as our flavors and our concept, I always try to say that there's two main concepts that guide us in what we do. One is you kind of touched upon our business uh, is kind of this classic soda fountain feel. So we want to have the classic flavors but we want to like nail the classics. Uh, you know, you guys have uh, vanilla. I don't know if I really want it vanilla. It's like, no, try this. It's and then gonna be the best we want, vanilla. Exactly, like yeah. we, people are like, wow, that's the best vanilla ice cream I've ever had or chocolate <laughs> or coffee or whatever. So half of this is, is what we call nailing the classics. And the other half is when we try a weird, a weird adventurous flavor, we want to make sure that flavor is a home run. So we are here with Cody now, the director of operations here at Bluebird Ice Cream. And he is going to walk us through some of their most famous treats. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And um, so tell me what you're going to be making for us today. So we're going to make a beer float with one of our, we're going to do some of our draft beverages. We'll scoop a uh, banana split. Oh my gosh, good thing I ate a small breakfast because I'm going to be loading up on ice cream. So yeah. this is our Theo chocolate milk stout. So it's uh, a stout made from uh, chocolate cocoa nibs from Theo, which is right up the street here in Fremont. So yeah. this is like the perfect combination of like your childhood and adulthood. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that just straight up looks like chocolate milk. Like, yeah, that's really chocolate deceiving. milk stout. It's... Yeah, so you're just like, here, Jimmy, here's your Ovaltine. <laughs> More Ovaltine, please. OK, so we're going to be pairing this with your vanilla bean. Yes, this is a classic combo. Um, we typically pair, you know, we recommend vanilla bean with all of our beers. Um, it's, they're all gonna, they're all gonna go great. You know, it's, we make a dessert profile that pairs with vanilla. Um, we can definitely always experiment with different flavors, but we're gonna start with classic. Yeah. Scoop it right in and oh, try that. that. I don't get a chance That's to do this good... too often. So yeah, right? Like to. Drinking on the job. This <laughs> yeah. is the only time you can do it. It's like the perfect combination of sweet and then you get a little bit of the bitter from the mm -hmm. stout and the darkness but it's not too bitter like mm -hmm. a guinness or something that's really overpowering yeah that is it's really well balanced i've noticed that as we went through and like tasting your your all your flavors off camera <laughs> um i noticed that you guys do a really good job of making everything really balanced like your marion berry tasted really fresh and just like the really subtle amount of the berry not overwhelming like a sweet jam and your peanut butter wasn't like a punch of s sweet and salty it was just everything's almost mellow but in like the best way possible thanks yeah it just like blends really well and this is a really really good example of that it's so good <laughs> jealous much <laughs> so now we're going to be moving on to my personal favorite dessert of all time this would actually be my death row dessert if i mm. had to choose classic banana split and i'm super excited so please walk us through it awesome so obviously we start with a banana we're going to just cut and split we do vanilla bean, we do chocolate pudding, and Marion Berry. Yeah. So you've got the whole Neapolitan style mm -hmm. spectrum. But with a little Washington flair. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got our three flavors in our banana, and then we're going to add some really amazing house-made toppings. So we're going to have uh, our brown sugar whipped cream, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, so this always gets three little dollops of whipped cream. Oh my. Look at that. That's oh yeah, <laughs> and then we get you bet Fox's you bet chocolate syrup, which is from Brooklyn. This recipe is about hundred years old. Um, this goes back to soda fountains of of yore. Look at the soda fountains of yore. <laughs> soda, soda fountains of yore. 
got everything that you want in a dessert. Mm -hmm. It's got the texture of the banana and the cream and the cold and the hot fudge and the crunch and the color and yeah. the whipped cream is, is soft and it's yeah. just like everything you'd want. It's a perfect dessert. Yeah, and so we're gonna add some rainbow sprinkles, which I know you love. Course, yes, that's what my blood call looks back, like. A callback to the <laughs> intro. Yes. <laughs> I just go to sleep in a bed of sprinkles, actually. <laughs> it's super messy, but I look adorable. Mm. Mm. I try not to eat these often. <laughs> the best. Like, I don't know, if you don't like banana splits, like, they're seriously just something dead inside of you because they're perfect. It's literally perfect. Mm. <laughs> We're here at King Donut in the Rainier Beach District of Seattle, where they specialize in fresh, daily made donuts, but they can also do your laundry and make you some Thai food to go. A three in one gem right here in the heart of Seattle. Um, the story goes that um, just 100 feet uh, here north on Rainier Avenue South, there used to be a strip mall. And in that strip mall was a laundromat business, a teriyaki business, and the uh, original donut business okay. um, owned by the Hay family. And when the Safeway moved in, they uh, tore it down, and so they had nowhere to go except to, into this building. And the two owners um, of the laundromat and the teriyaki shop um, decided that they were done and they wanted to do other things. Um, and so the Hay family decided that, you know, in order to move into this larger space and to fulfill the gap that those businesses serve, that uh -huh. they would just absorb all of them. Into one spot. <laughs> into one spot. And so was birthed King Donuts Teriyaki Laundromat. And Amazing. <laughs> I would say so. I would hang out here all day long. You know, and some people do. <laughs> yeah. And some people do. Uh, you know, donuts have been in our family for as long as I can remember. We arrived in the U.S. when I was very young, and so we were refugees from Cambodia. Last fall, my youngest brother was getting married, and so everyone converged here in the Pacific Northwest. And as my mom was doing her donut tour, as she tends to do, um, she came across King Donuts, and and uh, it was being operated by a uh, husband and wife duo at the time. Okay. And they popped in here. My mom popped in here with my cousin. And they got to joking around and someone said something along the lines of, hey, you want to buy this place? And it, essentially the answer was, well, actually, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, since you're selling, how much? Uh, it's a very, very Chinese, Cambodian way of doing business, I guess. It has a very homey, real, welcoming, you know, that, that feel that a lot of places I think are losing because they're trying to get too caught up in the hype of like what's popular or gimmicky or what, you know, aesthetically looks the coolest right now and they, they kind of lose that. What's really important about a business, especially a food business, because food is, you know, I think the nonverbal way that you can share and communicate no matter what language you speak with people, you can share a dish with them and understand that you're caring for them, you know? It's really cool here how you don't lose that sense. You walk in and you feel right away that it's a family-run business and people from all walks of life come in here and can just come together and enjoy the best donuts in town. So now we're in the back here at King Donut with Travis, the in-house donut master, <laughs> and we're gonna be making some of the most delicious donuts I've ever had. So what time do you start here? Because I just, it's a one-man operation basically back oh, yeah. here, right? Yeah, like I'm the one who rolls it, I cut it by hand and everything, and I start by three o'clock, but if I have big in orders. In the morning. Yes, Yeah. <laughs> in the morning, because I make it fresh every day. That's crazy, yeah. that's a long day. So every yeast braised donut that you have in house, you personally knead and shape by hand by yourself? Yes. I don't have any machines to cut it. I don't have machines to roll it. I cut the donuts by hand. How many dozens of those do you think you make in an average day? Mm. Of yeast based? Yeah, just yeast, just one of your variations. <laughs> Let me see. A good, almost 30 dozen of wow. just yeast. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Of just yeast. And then you have, what, at least four other variations that you do too by hand? Mm-hmm. But do you guys sell out pretty much of all your donuts every day? Just about. So how do you know when to flip them? Honestly, I do it by eye, and I don't count. So you're looking for 
Because with a good donut, you want almost that distinct little white line in between the two mm -hmm. golden colors. Yeah. If it gets too dark, two things, you burned it and it soaked up grease. You don't want to have it too light because whenever you try to put the icings on there, it's just going to deflate. Yeah, that color is beautiful. I feel like that's the color everyone in Miami wants to be. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they all go down there. <laughs> so what's in your glaze that you use? Honestly, it's just powdered sugar and hot water. Wow. No vanilla, no flavoring? Mm -mm. I don't like to have it too sweet. Mm -hmm. If you have any ugly ones, just throw them my way. I'll be, okay. <laughs> I'll be glad to take them off your hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It just melts. I literally was about to say that. It yeah. just literally just disintegrated. Yeah, me, I had to stay away. I started eating too many of my own products. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what you love to do? Yeah, it's to me, just seeing everybody come in, it's a great feeling because everybody turns into a kid when they walk through the doors to yeah. see all the donuts. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I walk by donuts all the time and I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny to me, it really is, but it's a good feeling, especially when people appreciate the hard work I put into it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, why don't you just get machines? Why don't you just get machines? You know, it's easier for you and easier on your back. I say, yeah, but think about it. Well, it tastes the same. I'm not even just saying this because you're here with us, but these are really some of the best donuts I've ever had. And I've Appreciate had a lot that. of donuts. <laughs>